You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan is shuffling papers and <laughs> trying to get his sh- shit together. Ryan, is your shit together today? I just, I shed. my I, I shed? End, my, I shed. My hair ends up everywhere. Oh, uh, great. It's all over my couch. It's all over the couch. It's all over my apartment. It's Which all over the hair? floor. Just my head hair. Oh, good. And good. so it, it just sort of ended up on a piece of paper and I was trying to brush it away. And that's how we started. Well, uh, it's good to have you here, Shedder. Thank you. Mr. Shedder. That's me. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for making this podcast your choice. Uh, if you're here for Jennifer Love Hewitt and you're only here for Jennifer Love Hewitt, I, I just hope you like the podcast. And afterwards, if you like it enough, maybe you want to hear other interviews and follow us at um, Inside of You Podcast at, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook at Inside of You Pod on the Twitter. You can watch the show on YouTube. And um, I'd really appreciate it if you wrote a review or just uh, continue listening and give the podcast a chance. Shout out to all the top tier patrons. Actually, shout out to all the patrons. Whether you uh, give a little or a lot, uh, you mean a lot to this podcast. And uh, I really, really appreciate you. Happy holidays. You can go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash inside of you, inside, patreon.com slash inside, and uh, become a patron member. A patron become a patron um i'll send you a message when you join and top tiers get things like boxes from me every couple of months and notes and there's all sorts of store discounts and there's uh there's there's a ton just go look at it look at the tiers and all that stuff and uh really appreciate your support i need it without a uh, patron i couldn't do this podcast there's just no doubt about it am i right ryan yes yes very true ryan knows the truth mm-hmm. um if you want to check out the store um that's in that's inside of you online store and we've got so many good so much good stuff there uh leximus scripts and ship keys from smallville and t-shirts and uh, a lot of stuff and if you join top tier patrons the uh, the prize box is going to be pretty cool this next time around because i had a lot of new things where's your little light oh, you I, I put it in a, on my keys you put it out. it's a, it's a key yeah. chain with a light mm-hmm. that says inside you and it glows and it's really cool yeah but there's other stuff too that you get not just that. Anyway, um, I'm on the Cameo. You can go to Linktree for everything on my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum. Go to Linktree, and you can see uh, cons that I'm doing. You can see my live podcast. My live podcast is downtown at the Regent Theater. It is January 24th. Special guest, Kristen Ritter, Jessica Jones. Um, she's done so, Breaking Bad. It, she has done so much great stuff. And if you want to meet her, there's a meet and greet for VIPs. And it's so much fun. If you didn't join us with Zach Levi, you really missed out. We had a blast. It was a great time. Tons of laughter, some intense conversations, and some really funny conversations. So uh, get tickets on my link tree, at the Michael Rosenbaum on Instagram. And uh, thank you for all your love and support this year. Our guest this uh, week is Jennifer Love Hewitt. Second time around, but it's been a while. It's been a while, and uh, I love talking to her. I think she's one of the sweetest human beings on the planet. She truly has a heart of gold, gives so much, and um, is a solid person and so talented. And we talk about her show, 911. We talk about uh, we talk about everything. You're going to really enjoy this. So, without further ado, Ryan, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's get inside of Jennifer Love. It's my point of view, you're listening to Inside of You, with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. You know, I don't get to see you very often. I know. Primarily because you're married, you have a big career, and you have three children now. A two- a nine and a seven and an eight an eight yeah that's a lot of work man so much work i mean do you have a nanny um we have had help like off and on we don't have any yeah i mean yes but not like a you know like some people have them that have been there since like the babies were born and stuff like that we haven't had that um we waited a really long time to do that because i think we just wanted to be super involved and you know, kind of get in there, but, um, but yeah, it's definitely getting hard not to have help. Yeah. Cause I remember like you were like all about, that's my puppy, but you were all about 
like family, even from your first kid, I remember you were doing, I think the ghost whisper or criminal minds or something. And you said, I'm taking a three year hiatus. Yeah. You just said, boom, I'm done family. Yeah. Was that a hard decision or was that something that you were pretty adamant about off the go? I mean, it was, if I'm being honest, it was hard because other people didn't like it. It was easy for me. Um, but it was hard for people around me. I think they all were like, Oh, was this postpartum? Is she lost her mind? What's, what's a combination of both what's going on? Um, and I was just very clear, but you know, I had my daughter a year after my mom passed. Yeah. So I was very much like, Oh, the universe is just, you know, I consider myself a student of the universe daily and it had just taught me a very valuable lesson and that there are bigger things in life than, you know, being on the train of Hollywood and, I needed to just, I, I just needed to be well. I needed to like take care of myself mentally and emotionally and being a mom for me did that. And being an actress at that time did not So I just needed a break. Yeah. I remember that. We've talked yeah. about that many moons ago when yeah. I had you on. And by the way, you know, we'll get into the whole Hollywood train because I know you want to talk mm -hmm. about that and all that stuff, but I'm looking at your Instagrams and I just want to know, I, look, this might not air till after Halloween or whatever, but folks, if you yeah. look at Jennifer Love Hewitt's Instagram page, you're going to see a yeah. lot of Halloween during Halloween. And this is like, this isn't like me. I go to CVS and I grab a $4.99 plastic pumpkin and put it in front of my house. <laughs> this is like detail. It's all, I think you're a person that's always in the detail. If you throw someone's birthday party, it's detailed. Yeah. If you ever... Halloween detailed, the Christmas tree, everything's got to be right. And you want, and especially for your kids, you want them to just see it, be it, live it. I do. It's, I a, do. it's expensive. I How much do you spend? Don't lie on Halloween. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. And I don't know that I even look, um, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had to get a storeroom unit. Let me just say that much for oh, all of my boy. holiday decorations. Um, I am actually like officially starting a brand called the holiday junkie and it's going to be like all of my holiday stuff. Cause I'm obsessed. But part of the reason that I'm obsessed with Halloween is it's Brian's birthday. So for us, it's like this big holiday, but it's also his day, which I think is so cool. So we really go over the top. His birthday is on the 31st on the 31st. Wow. And yeah. how old will which he be? How old will Brian be? He's going to be 45. And I won't ask your age. I'm going to be 45 in February. Oh, so you're. Young. But he's older than me, so boom. <laughs> well, you look great. You look young. You look. I still would think that's, you like in your mid 30s. That's really nice. But we we you know so Halloween you spend a lot of money and now you're starting your yeah. own product line. What is it called again? Hollywood. Holiday junkie. Hollywood junkie. Holiday junkie. Holiday junkie. What will you sell? Holiday things. Yeah. So you, yeah, so your I've own writing, design. I've been. I'm writing cards with um, this company called 2021 Co. And we have a whole like holiday line of cards. Um, I have uh, two big things coming out next year that I have to do with the holiday junkie gift that I can't tell you about yet, but I'll come back on maybe if you'll have me. Yes. Um, and yeah, and then we're going to do like products and stuff. It's going to wow. be really fun. I'm excited. It could be pretty lucrative too, huh? I mean, I think so. It's just like, it's my happy place. So I just need it in my life to like, you know. Give some balance. Well, you kind of do, not you kind of do, you do everything like actress, singer, book was in the best selling New York Times bestseller list. You're doing products, you're doing it's just like, and I've started doing that too, but I I do it and I, I think you do it like for this as well, for this reason is is I do things like I'm coming out with a, a children's book. And I always oh. wanted to make one and Simon and Schuster are putting it out in June. And it's really, oh I might have to ask you for a quote on the back of the book. Yes. It's, and it's just like, look, is it a moneymaker? No, but I no. wanted to do it. I've always wanted to do it. So I'm doing things. I'm coming out with a pet product. Yay. I'm like, you know, and it's just called, you know, Rosie something. I can't tell you exactly what it is yet, but, um, and I just, I was working with my friend. I'm like, let's just do this. This will be fun. If it, it's not a big risk, if it doesn't work, oh, oh well. So yeah. I like, I started, it took me a long time, but I always was chasing things that, chasing after things that people wanted me to do. You have to act. You have to do this. What are you doing wasting your time? What? Are, and I'm like, 
so I was doing things based really on what other people wanted, my agent, my business manager, even some friends. And then I thought, is it what you want to do? What do you want to do? Well, I want to make music. I'm not the best singer in the world, but I can sing and I can write songs and I want to do it for me. I don't want to be a rock star or make millions. I mean, it'd be nice, but I'm doing it for me. Do you find that the older you get, you start to do more of that? Yes. And it's beautiful. But isn't it frustrating that we wait so long? Yeah. I have this conversation with my kids all the time, eight and 10. And I'm already like, guys, spend your life doing things you really want to do. Like spend your life doing that because you're happy when you're doing things that you really want to do. And I get it. Like Hollywood is this very specific pocket of time. And by the way, people that said to me, Hey, you know what? Let's not go to college right now. Like you really want to go. I really wanted to go to college. And they were like, you could go to college and you would have an amazing time, but you're also like on this trajectory right now. Like just keep it going, keep the train moving. Cause it's Hollywood. You never know when it's going to, you know, Yeah. and they weren't wrong about that. And I had a great time. Um, but there's still a part of me that wishes I'd gone to college. You know what I mean? And like, why am I now at 45 wanting to do that? You know, wait, or, you want to go back to college any, now? I don't know. There's a part of me that would really love to. Why don't you do college. a semester? Well, maybe I'll wait until my daughter goes to college and that way I can be like in the bushes watching everything. That's, is that creepy? That reminded me of Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite when she knocks on the door and she's like, I'm saving up to sell these bands for college. And Kip's in the other room and goes, Your mom goes to college. <laughs> It always cracked me up. Inside of You is brought to you by Aura Frames. Hang on. If you guys want the best Christmas gift, they sent me one of these Aura Frames, and it is beautiful. Where is it, Ryan, when you walk in? Oh, yeah. It's right in your living room, right next to the fireplace. Are you in there? I am in there. You are in there. <laughs> It's so good. Here's the thing with pictures, you know, it's a digital frame, right? Digital picture frame from Aura Frames. And it's the nicest. It comes like a gift. So you could send it to somebody and it opens, you open it. It's like, it looks like it was a, it's a gift. It's almost wrapped, you know? Um, what's great about this is I have millions of pictures on my computer that I never look at. I forget about. Once I upload them, I'm done. With these Aura Frames, the digital frames, you have, I have hundreds of pictures that are continuously going and I'm reminded of all the joy and happiness I have in my life and the memories of my friends and these times. And it's right there in the living room. So all can see when I'm sitting there with the dogs, I look over, I see it and it's just wonderful. The holidays are all about connecting with loved ones and there's no better way to do that than with a digital picture frame from Aura Frames. Wirecutter called it the best digital photo frame. And it's easy to see why. You can upload your favorite pics of the family to one frame and relive all those happy moments again. And if that's not personal enough, you can even upload a video message to play on the frame as soon as they plug it in. So the first thing they hear is your voice and how much you love them. How cool is that? Give the best gift ever this holiday season. And honestly, it is the best gift. There's nothing else I could think of that really just sort of accentuates your love for someone, and also, you know, it's it, it's just a warm, loving gift, and it, the gift that keeps on giving. I'm going to get my grandmother one. I'm going to get my mother one. I don't know how many pictures I have of my mother. But regardless, she'll have pictures of my dogs and things like that. Visit AuraFrames.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code INSIDE. These frames sell out quickly, though, so get yours before they're gone. That's Aura Frames, A U R A frames.com with the promo code inside. Visit AuraFrames.com for terms and conditions. Um, you know, you sent me, first of all, let me talk about your tattoo. What does your tattoo say? Oh my gosh, I have a lot of tattoos. Which one? But the new one. The new one. It says, The universe always provides. Mm, it does. It does when you think about it, when you channel that. When you're open to it. Open when you're to open it. to it and you give it all your faith, I believe that. The trick about it, which is taking me a long time to learn, is that it doesn't always provide when you want it to and in the way that you want it to. But if you really look deep at your life and the situations that you're in, whether it's when you're in them or later, you will realize that the universe always provides. It does. And I think you have to, I talk about this ad nauseum, but no matter what job you're doing out there, you know, have a passion, 
You don't have to make yep. money off it. You don't have to, but if you're doing something on the side you love, that will give you the energy mm -hmm. to do the things you don't love. And it will make yep. you feel like you, you know, you're, you're doing something for yourself. So whatever that is, if you've always had a desire to build cars or whatever, or paint or, you know, work with uh, children or work with, you know, uh, nursing homes, whatever it is, you know, some of these things give you purpose. Yeah. And, and I think it's just so important. And a lot of times, look, it's taken me, I'm 51 now. And I'm just like, why is it taking me so long? But maybe that's just the, that was just my fate. It was just like, Hey, it's better to find it now than not finding it and going, why did I ever, why didn't I ever do anything that I wanted to do? You know what I mean? But also the key I feel like is like, I have, I have friends who are like, I don't know. I've been trying to manifest this thing and it's not happening. Or I've, I've, I don't know. I, I wake up and I say, this is what I want, you know, every day. And I'm like, well, question a is, are you grateful? Like, are you practicing gratitude while you're practicing manifestation? Cause the universe will reward a grateful person all day, but a non-grateful person, they're like, I have so many people that are manifesting. I have no time for you. Like I have to, I have to move on. <laughs> what do you, you say? What, you what are your gratitudes? And you do you say them every night or every morning? So I've been doing this thing. I was going to tell you today, I've been doing this thing for 21 days now where I found like 15 affirmations that I absolutely love. And I say 15 of them every morning. Um, and then I say three very specific ones at night. And I have been really like, no matter what, even if the baby's kept me up all night and I'm exhausted or someone I love is going through something that's like really dark and crazy, um, or the world that we live in, which is insane at the moment, um, and has been for, you know, the last like three and a half years in so many different ways. Um, I start with gratitude and I end with gratitude. And I really feel like, I really feel like it's just, it's just changed me like in such a really profound, cool way. And so I highly recommend it for people like just, just start. And, and gratitude is different for everyone. Sometimes it's my family. Sometimes it's just being grateful that I can get up and move my body in the morning. Um, it's, I always say that I'm grateful that I get the chance to live another day. Cause I really do feel that way. Um, and then at night I just kind of like thank the world around me for the opportunity to like all the things that I learned and took in. Um, and I release any like negative or icky stuff. And then I, I ask for like a peaceful rest and I get it. And, and no it's matter been how really, been really great. No matter how tired you are, you always do that. I do. Mm -hmm. Do you say it out loud? I do, I do say it out loud. You know what? My kids have started joining me on the nighttime ones and they love it. Like last night, Atticus or night before night, uh, night before Atticus was like, can I, can I say your affirmations with you? Will you say them out loud for me too? And I was like, yeah. And so sometimes we'll do ones in the morning for them before they go to school, but they really like the idea of feeling like, oh, we can, we can have a little bit of control over like goodness and stuff that goes into our minds. That's um, beautiful. And yeah, get it embedded good. in them at a young age, gratefulness, mm. because I don't think I knew anything about that. I mean, I just, Me either. my childhood was a whirlwind. So it was dysfunction and all this stuff around. So there was no time for, you know, thankfulness. And, and I didn't understand that or learn it. Uh, I just, I was just living in chaos and, and, and at that developmental age, you know, whether it's four to nine or whatever that little gap is, that's when we really learn and, yeah. and we remember everything from around that mm -hmm. time. And like, if they were bad, we don't forget them. And if they were yeah. good, we don't forget them. So it's incorporating a lot of love and, and a good feeling and confidence and things for your kids. And I'm not a, a dad, but you know, if I ever had a kid, I, I definitely would instill that, that love and that gratefulness and, and, and those things. So I, I commend you on that. I think that's pretty Thank badass. you. And Thanks. it sounds like you learned it from your mom. I did. I did. She was a very grateful person. Very yeah. grateful. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think in losing her, I learned it like tenfold, um, um, which has been a gift. So she gave it to me twice. She gave it to me once while she was here and once while she was gone, you know? You know, I can I read this little post that you sent on Instagram? Yeah. It was to your mom. And it said, 11 years ago, my life changed in a moment. We didn't get to say goodbye, but I think it's because we wouldn't have known how. I see you in my kids every day. I feel you in things I say and smile because I'm more like you than I thought. I honor you by trying to create magic for my family just like you did for us. I love you deeply. I'm so grateful you are a mom. 
this day will always hurt because you were that special always and forever mom. And it, it brought me to tears. It was just like, cause I, I remember what a tough time you were going through. It was just an absolute shock and it's always a shock, yeah. but for you, it was even more of a shock. Do you, um, do you still, uh, think about her all the time? Do you still get emotional about her? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, um, I do, I do think about her all the time. It's, it's interesting in like, um, so I, I have, <laughs> I wasn't actually going to say this today, but I will say it. I, um, I just wrote a book. Another one. Um, yeah. That will be coming out um, next year. I haven't told anybody. This is, this yes. is, this is me telling people, yes. um, telling you. Um, and it, um, it is, it is a love letter to my mom um, about who she was, who she was to me, all the things, but I also talk about losing her and how that sort of affected me in the early days of like having my children and, um, you know, all that she's been left with, uh, all that she left me with. Um, and so in writing the book, I had to like really go into some like sad stuff, um, and some uncomfortable places. And, um, and I was just telling my kids the other day, they were like, you seem um, lighter about Mimi, which is what they call her. And I was like, you know what? I, I feel that way. And it's like something about writing my love for her, like made me fall in love with her all over again, but in this like joyful way, instead of this deep, sad way. Um, and so I will always, I always have this like little pocket that hurts. Um, but it's lighter than it used to be, um, 11 years later. And, um, and I think it's because I got to like, just really give my love to her in this book. And so I'm really excited for people to read it. It's about the holidays. It's about, you know, um, being joyful in your life and creating magic and, you know, all those things. There's lots of light stuff in it too, but it, in the beginning, it's really just about her, um, and, and how she's in everything that I do now for my kids and my husband and my family, um, is to honor her in, in like a really beautiful way. So I'm in a, I'm in a really good place with my, my grieving of her, because, um, I feel like, especially in this last year, writing the book, we've spent a lot of time together. Um, and I've really felt her close and it's been, it's been really nice. That is, that is awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, God forbid if my mom passed away, it would probably be uh three pages. Three pages of <laughs> No, I, I'm just kidding. But like uh no, I don't want her, you know, she's she's uh you know, the thing is, you know, she always guilted me when I was young, like, you only have one mother. So I always thought no matter how bad it is, I only have one. Which yeah. is a complete manipulation. It's like, <laughs> you know, but what are the things, if you had to sum it up, like what are the things that have made you a better person that she um, gave you? What things did she give I, you? Deep gratitude for sure. Um, I, I remember when we first came to LA, my mom was like, okay, there's, there's, you know, two things that I want you to think about, like being a kid in, in Hollywood. She was like, one is the second it's not fun, we pack up our stuff and we go home. That's it. It has to be fun because you're a kid and you should be having fun. And so if this isn't fun, then we have to we like forget it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Then the second thing is she said, I want you to look at your career as like that toy that you want from Santa so bad when you're a kid. And then you get it, and there's two types of kids. One will take the toy and break it the first day and smash it into pieces, even though it was the thing that they wanted more than anything in the world. Or you have the kid who like packs up their room when they're getting ready to go to college and that toy is still in a box somewhere because they took such good care of it, right? That they loved it forever. And she was like, you can look at your career and you can take care of it either way that you want. And she's like, but I really hope that you'll choose the kid who is something really proud to still hold on to like years and years and years wow. and years later. That is and great I never advice. forgot that she said it. And so that's what I did. Like, that's how I always treated my career. I was like, okay. And I would always like, even in my twenties, I would be like, oh, am I trying to smash this right now? Like that kid at Christmas, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, or do I want to hold on to it? I was like, okay, let's be, let's be calm. Let's be kind. Let's be, you know, grateful to have it. And you know, all of those things. So those two things definitely stick out. Um, 
my mom also was just, I don't even know how to explain it, but like literally everyone that met her felt like they had known her forever and they loved her. Like she could just walk into a room and people thought, even, even though she was special to us and like maybe not into the rest of the world, people thought she was someone like, that's how she carried herself. She carried herself with this like presence of light and it was amazing when she passed, I got all these random messages from people and like DMS from people. And I knew that they were real because they were like, I felt like I knew your mom forever. And I felt like I was a better person after I met her. And I was like, Oh, that person actually did meet my mom because that's just who she was. Wow! So it was great. And so I try to have that energy. You know, How lucky, how lucky it is to grow up with someone with your mom being a role model. Like my grandfather was a role model for me. Yeah. Um, but to have your, one of your parents as their role model and someone you aspire to, you know, to do good things because of, and, and yeah. you probably make a lot of decisions based on, you know, how would mom feel about this? Do you do that? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely in good and bad ways. You know, I don't want to make it sound like my mom and I were perfect all the time or like she didn't ever get on my nerves or we never had, you know, fights about things or, or whatever. But I, I was always very conscious of the fact that like people would always say, be careful one day you're going to turn around and turn out like your mother. And I was, my reaction was always like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank good. You. I really hope so, you know? And, um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely think of things all the time. Like with my kids, I'll be, you know, or I laugh at like, oh my gosh, if my mom was here right now, she would be laughing at me in this situation or how I'm going to handle this or like, what's going to happen. And, um, yeah, she was just, she was just tremendous. And, um, and I really feel so lucky to have had her. And I think in writing the book now, I live more with her memory in that space than I do in like the everyday sadness space, obviously on the big anniversaries and things like that. Christmas is really hard for me. I always miss our Christmas the most. Um, and I, you know, I'll, I'll always have those. Cause like I said, she deserves it. She deserves me to be that sad about her because she was that special. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been living more in just joy about her lately. That's great. And that's been really nice. And the fact that your kids see it is just like mesmerizing. Yeah. All right. Switching gears here a little bit. You, you text yeah. me this. Yeah. And we don't have to go into it, but I think it was pretty important to you. You said a lot of stuff to say about aging mm-hmm. in, in Hollywood, they freeze us at the age. They feel we were our best. Like we aren't allowed to grow past that. And that was very, that, that was very profound. And it, and I wanted you to just talk about that a little, cause I know that it was important to you. Yeah. It's such an interesting, so I actually, <laughs> it was actually Taylor Swift that said that, um, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a Swifty. Um, wait, but, Taylor Swift uh, said what I just said. Not, not that exactly, oh. but she was talking about the idea that like people freeze you. Like they, they have this moment when they fall in love with you, right. As a, as an artist or a creative or a celebrity or whatever it is that you're seen as to people. And they, they pick this moment and then that's who they want you to always be. Um, and there's something really beautiful about that, but there's also something really not okay about that in that it, it, it's interesting. I don't want to say that aging is hard because aging is a privilege. It means you're here it means you're still living it. It means your every line is because of a smile or a laugh you had, or in my case, too many crying scenes, which have given me like this, like, oh, I'm just always crying on, on camera. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> I notice these, it. Like, things, whatever, but I earned those, right? Like every crying scene, I earned those. Um, and so it's beautiful, but aging in Hollywood is really hard. It's really hard because you can't do anything right. You know, I, I had this thing like a few weeks ago, and this is what made me text you about it. I had, uh, I was getting my hair done and I had not a stitch of makeup on. So I threw on a filter and it was just a filter that like at the time looked nice in the light at the salon. I really gave it no thought and I put it on and the picture ended up somewhere. And a bunch of people were like, Jennifer LaFeuille is unrecognizable. This show is sponsored by better help. BetterHelp Online Therapy. Do not fast forward because this is something that truly helps so many people around the world. So many of my friends, um, you hear the guests, how many guests talk about therapy. And it's just, it's amazing. And a lot of people, I talk about how, you know, a family member who, you know, 
no one will understand me. No one knows what I've been through. Well, that's not true. There's so many people that do know what you're going through and, and, um, they've seen it all and therapy really truly helps. It helps me. And whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you can always give yourself the gift of a healthier you. Whether by starting therapy, going easier on yourself in tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. This time of year can be a lot. It's hectic. It's stressful. It's really easy to forget to take time for yourself, but you deserve it as much as your loved ones do. And it's super convenient with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Even during the holidays, just fill out a brief questionnaire, this thing takes no time at all, to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. So if you're not vibing with your therapist, don't think, oh, it's not working. No, just switch to another therapist and feel the vibes. Feel good about who you're talking to, you feel uh, comfortable, and you will find that with better help. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with better help. Visit BetterHelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Inside of You is brought to you by Discover. If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time you also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. Hey guys, I'm doing another live podcast downtown LA at the Regent Theater, and my special guest, for January 24th is Kristen Ritter, Breaking Bad, Jessica Jones. This is gonna be a sold out event, I know it, it's gonna be exciting, and uh, there's a meet and greet, and so much fun that's gonna happen January 24th, so make sure you get tickets as soon as possible. Downtown Los Angeles at the Regent, inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum with special guest Kristen Ritter. I'm so excited. And then another place was like, she's unrecognizable. And so she's gone to filters because she doesn't want us to know how, how bad she actually looks now in her forties. Oh, and I was like, this is crazy. Right. So then I did a bunch of like over the top, like crazy filters on my Instagram. And I was like, all natural, no filter, like trying to make fun of it. And then they came after me for that. And they were like, well, now she's just defending herself. And like, why is she defending? And I realized I was like, I can do, I can do no, I can do and no And why right. are and you focusing so much on these assholes who have nothing better to do than to put you down? Because, because to pretend that we don't is I a know. lie. I know, I know. You're we're, right. we're human. And yes, they're known as haters. And they're known as people who like, you're just supposed to turn your comments off. And you're supposed to, but it's human nature to be like, what do people think about me? I've been an actor for 36 years. You know this, like you're the same way. It's like, you don't want to care what people think about you, but you have to care what people think about you. You want to know what's out there. And I will say the majority of people have been very kind to me. They've grown up with me. They look like I do now, right? We're all getting lines and maybe in menopause and who knows what else is coming for us, <laughs> you know, about to get a colonoscopy, like whatever. Like we're all there I got one and too. it's beautiful and it's weird. And, you know, we're all doing it together and it's fine. But like, there are those people out there. And the only reason those people bother me is because I think that it is, I, I'm a, I'm a mother of a girl. And it's dangerous what we put on people. It's dangerous, I think, to say to women, you can't, you can't look like you're not 22 to me anymore because I don't know how to, I don't know how to take that. Okay, well, that's your problem because I'm 44 and I, this is what I look like. You know what I mean? Um, and so it just, it just bothered me in that way that I feel like, I just feel like we're, and, and by the way, that whatever age it is, I feel like people, maybe these people like have picked, they seem to have picked like somewhere between 23 and 25 for me, which by the way, she was a looker, like congratulations to that 23 or 25. <laughs> but I'm t a different person now. You, you know, um, and it's great, but there's also like that 23 and 25 year old wasn't in her body. Like 
at 23, 24, 25, I didn't feel self-confident. I felt watched. I felt like I had to be everything for everybody all the time. I was called sexy before I ever knew what se- being sexy was. Like I was 17 years old on the, on the cover of Maxim. And I had no idea why I was on the cover of Maxim. I was, I was honored and I loved it. But I was like, what? You know, I remember doing um, Heartbreakers at 23. And the director was like, we just need to be sexier. And I had to pull him aside. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm only 23. I know that I'm supposed to be this thing for people, but I don't know what that means. And he had to like, help me figure that out, you know? And so it's weird for me when people are like, that's the girl that we wanted you to be. And I'm like, that girl was so insecure and had so confused and like trying her best. But Uh. this girl who may not look the way you, I I like who I am. I feel good. I'm fine. You feel sexy now? Yeah. You should. Yeah. I mean, not every day, but like, you know, and I have my moments and, you know, there's definitely times where I look in the mirror and I'm like, Oh dear God, what is happening? Oh my God, those are every <laughs> and day. And then there's other times where I'm like, oh, Chris, she got it. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Um, but but I but they they pick this age, and I love the Taylor Swift said it because I was like, she's right. Like they do, they they find this little pocket of time and they hold you there. Um, and I think as a society or haters or you know, whatever the small group of people are out there, I think we have to, I think we have to do better. I think we have to be kinder to people. And I think we have to allow people to change and grow and, and look different and just wish them well. And Yeah. It's hard. I think that's why Ryan's here, but you can only hear him. You probably can't see him, but What's up, uh, Ryan? hi Ryan. How you doing, Ryan? <laughs> J- Jennifer love wants to say, I ain't but today I walked in, I go, should I wear this? He goes, you look like you always do. Like you don't really give a shit. But I'm like, <laughs> well, I just, I figure if I don't try and I'm a guy, it's way different. It's way different. It's obviously. It is no, for me and the guys too. It is. But like, you know, people are like, oh, he wears a t-shirt and he like, you know, just wears sweats and just doesn't, you know, he's a dude. And then whenever I do dress up or something, it's like, hey, and I'd rather see that than to always be like. Ah, but he's always, and then they notice my aging more <laughs> if I'm always dressing up. That's, I think, where my mind goes. Plus, I'm incredibly lazy. Um, but look, it is hard. It's, you know, how many times have we all sat there and go, oh, my gosh, what happened to them? You know, and it's like, it's terrible. It's judgmental. And it's like, you know, I, I stop myself. I go, you know what? That's not cool. That's not cool. But a lot of time, the plastic surgery it just oh, yeah. is so it's so it's much scary. that you, it, you you have to it's not even being judgmental it's just being you can't not talk about the obvious and right. so you know what i mean and you know i what happens to with me is what upsets me is that it starts at such an early age now like people scary. are getting plastic surgery in their 20s 19 20 yeah. and it's like you're going to develop more and you're growing into yourself and it's like this is your youth don't yeah. change your youth unless you have an abnormality and you want to change your nose because it really doesn't give you confidence or there's things out there i get it but the you know seeing at such a young age people doing this to themselves and it's a lot of times it's not good work or getting their lips all blown up and you oh know you gosh, have to be yeah. really careful you have to be really careful because it's just, uh, it's, it's hard. But isn't it because of, you know, Society. we see yeah. the best of everybody and we, and there are so, I mean, the filters that are out there are so crazy. I mean, my daughter will play on filters, like, you know, she'll play with filters and she'll be like, Whoa, I look amazing. And I'm like, no, you don't, you don't look like yourself. No, take that off, Do you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. but then I'll use it. But then I, I'll use that filter and then the world says that I'm unrecognizable. And I'm oh, like, okay, God. well, you know, it's crazy. You can't win. You just can't win. But I do, I do think that, um, yeah, aging is weird. It's just weird. Um, and I think that we just all have to be kinder to the process, I but know. we also have to just let people just let people age however yeah. they age. I know that some are never going to age. I mean, look at Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. I, I, none of us can do that. We can't do that. She's just, she's just amazing and gorgeous. And like, you know, everyone's going to age how they age. And some I think people have, have better genes. 
Some people just have yes. better genes. Like, you know, I when, wasn't born like your husband, by the way, Brian, he was born I'm with sorry. good genes. He's a hottie. It's crazy. Like, I'm like, oh my God, he's a hottie. Like he was like, you great genes. You look fantastic. I would, no, I'm not saying that because we're friends. I'm saying that you do look fantastic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring it up if you looked awful, you know? <laughs> I think that's a little thing off. This little thing I'd like to go. No, no, This no. is 44 you for you. You know what? Little, you don't even where, see that. It's, you know, and when where, you're on film, you hope. You it see did. it on camera. When I cry on, on 911, all you see is this little like. <laughs> By the way, on 911. When you're the operator, right? You're the operator, yeah. the emergency operator. At this yeah. point, with all your lines, can't you just put the lines in the screen and not have to memorize them? <laughs> I would. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to do that because you're reading them as they they get printed out, or they're, right. Well, some yeah, some of some of it's up there because of the things, and then some of it's not because they change. They have to, you know, they they're constantly like rewriting or they'll do my part before they do the emergency or they'll do the emergency before they do my part. So it's all kind of. But, yeah, I mean, it's you know, you're able to, you know, kind of for the phone calls and stuff like that. It's actually quite helpful because they will actually run the phone call up there for you so that you can you can react as if you would if you were hearing it. Yeah, right. I, I pulled the brand yeah. a few times. I would have like lines written in a book or I'd have <laughs> I have the prop guys. I go, hey, listen, when I'm reciting that Alexander the Great thing. Make sure it's in this book right here on this page at this height, so it looks like I'm reading it, or it looks like I'm you know I, always on Criminal Minds. On Criminal Minds, um, when I was pregnant in real life, I like literally my brain was just gone. Like I just it's like a thing when you're pregnant, like you just don't remember anything. And so I would I would write some of my lines like in the files. I would be on the plane. I'd be like, oh, suspect is a, and he's you know, mm. yeah. <laughs> I would laugh and I'd be like, guys, I have, there's like literally nothing happening upstairs. I'm sorry. I worked with an actor once who taped his lines for his coverage on my forehead. I've, I <laughs> I actually put my lines of, for another actor's coverage. who was a guest star. And I said, we always do this. We didn't, but I was like, we always do this. So I put him on there and he, and he still fucked it up. I was like, Jesus, dude, just read the fucking lines. Oh dude, no, it's too small, mate. It's too small. I can't read the lines on the sheet, mate. I'm like, Would you like me to write them out? Well, screw us when we get older, right? And we'll be like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> be like, can you step back further? I think everybody should have earwigs. That's what I think. I think we should just. Like, I can't. Do, no, no. Have you tried it? I've had to do those like when I'm singing and stuff before and it drives me insane. I can No, no, but that. these are really tiny and they fit in your ear. They're but really... we still have to learn our lines. That's our job. Yeah, for you. Sure. Um, <laughs> is 911, how many years have you been doing this now? Uh, six. Five or six. Is it fun or does it feel like it's just sort of like for me after season four or five, it started to like, go, okay, this is redundant. I'm doing the same thing. I know what I'm doing here. It's kind of a, or does it get, cause you have a complicated, you know, uh, character yeah. and relationships and stuff like that. So is it something that you truly enjoy still doing or you're like, you're ready to move on to the next thing? You know, <clears throat> I do still enjoy doing it. I love the people. I've been very lucky to have this job. Um, it's, it sounds awful because it, it was so much work, but like my character started off so in so much turmoil mm-hmm. and so much drama and so much trouble and everything that it was so fun to play. But then the audience really wanted her to get like happy and kind of normalized again. And that part is hard for me because I really liked, I really liked playing I really, it was the, one of the first times that I didn't have to just play like the happy, sweet, nice girl. You know what I mean? And so I, I miss, I miss Maddie's turmoil a little bit, which sounds awful to say, because you should want for, you know, people to be happy and, and joyful. Um, but I do miss her turmoil a little bit. So, um, it's, it's still an amazing job that I love doing, but I do miss, I do miss that. So I'm, I'm always like, can we, can we have something get messed up again? Like, <laughs> you she know, screw up another nine one one call, and it be her fault, and then she has to report to the, you know, yeah, something. I told I her, love, I told I her, her to get the gun, and then she shot herself. It was, a, it was my mistake. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking. And then you go into uh, alcoholism and have to go to AA, and you're really yeah, upset something. about this, I and just, you visit I the mom, and you. I love how her issues always come up and, and we have done like last season was sort of an issueless season for her. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that in this next one, maybe we can, you know, they can come back again, just, just a little every now and then. Cause it's fun for me. They're hard days when I have to do all that, but I secretly love it. 
Um, so I think that that would be, that would be fun. And then I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm ready for like my Christmas movie era. Wait you know, a minute. You want to start doing Hallmark? I mean, I don't know. Like Lifetime. Like, I don't know. I just have never. And you love I've Christmas. Never done, I've never done the Christmas. Thing. I have so many friends that have done those and they love them. I want to do it. Erica Durant, do so Amanda Klutz, like, yes. people, like they love doing them and it's fun and you could write your own if you want I and know. you could produce and you could do all that, you, you know. So I'm ready to step into like my Christmas movie era too. And I feel like some of my friends are like, no, that's what happens when you're in your forties and you go do Christmas movies. And I'm like, but I am in my forties and I want to do Christmas movies. <laughs> so I'm kind of looking forward to doing something like that. Maybe after 911 to kind of, you know, be like emergencies and then joy. Well, I can't maybe think about like, if you do a Christmas story, maybe I'm your alcoholic. Brother. Why don't you come direct? A, why don't you come direct a Christmas movie? I, w- I would do that. If you were in it, I would do, we'd have a blast. Yeah. That would be fun. I would do that. I would do it if it was fun. And it was like, you know, just for, yeah, yeah. Would, you, would you be like the, the guy in a Christmas movie? I'd like to be the alcoholic brother that kind of gets oh, a shit, okay. to, gets that's a shit not, together. That's, at the end. that's not done a lot. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I could be, how about the guy that you don't think she's going to end up with? Like the guy that, yeah. the delivery guy. I'm delivering Amazon yeah, the all the time. Christmas. I'm the delivering Am- yeah, I'm delivering Amazon packages all the time. And I'm just like, hey, great. And you're like, hey, would you mind putting that out there? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know, I'll take care of that for you. I'll do that. Hey, you look really nice today, Mrs. Uh, uh, Johnson. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden you're like, he's really nice and he's cute, but he's the delivery guy. I, I don't know if I can. And then I say, you know. I'm actually a millionaire. I just do this for fun. We should hang out. I'm reconsidering. <laughs> I'm reconsidering my offers. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a bad movie. idea. I've really blown I'm it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Have you ever seen a Christmas movie? Uh, Christmas Story. Um, Christmas Vacation. I okay. I haven't seen it any lifetimes. Classic. Yeah, you gotta you gotta watch like the like, you know. Send me one. Send me one that you think I, is good. You should watch Amanda's. It's great. Oh, I did see Fifth. some of that. And I liked it. Fifth she did a really good job. Fifth for Christmas. Fifth for Christmas. Yeah, she's great. That's right. That's great. I did see that. And that Anna was White good. wrote it, who's amazing. And also my friend. So proud okay, of her. Anyway, Amanda, Amanda's it. fantastic. Wait, didn't she's you introduce me to her? Yes. Yes, you did. Yes. She's my neighbor. We become good friends. Yeah. yeah. You're just a... Uh, yeah. You know, how I didn't do you do it? I should become friends, but that's okay. Whatever. Do, do you still... <laughs> <laughs> do you still do you bastard do you still get anxiety do you still get depressed do you still go to, oh, you yeah. go to therapy yes 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 and yes um <laughs> yeah um i do still get anxiety i will say the affirmations have been helping a little bit um and i'm going to give you oh i have to tell you this because you will love this and you will use it you're like one of the few people that i know that will actually use it um this amazing woman that i know um Carol, she's like a, a healer and just, she's just amazing, but she's, she's also been one of my like really close friends for 20 plus years. And, um, she's taught me this new thing Listen that up. when anxiety or fear comes up, she will just text me and say, sit with me under the tree of no doubt. And the tree of no doubt it's just, it's all goodness. Like every branch carries Sit with me possibility, under the tree face, of no doubt. like joy, love, whatever it is in your mind. Um, everything works out in your favor. The universe always provides under the tree of doubt. Um, text me that. And text me that. It's yeah, it's, I will, I will. And it's really beautiful and you can use it anytime that you want. And so I've, been trying to do that lately. Like if something creeps in, I don't wait for it to kind of build or, you know, I don't kind of force myself to be like, let's sit in this and and see where this is. I'm just like, I'm not, I don't want to be in that space right now. And so I'll either text her back and say, Hey, meet me under the tree of no doubt. Or I'll just in my mind, picture this, like whatever this tree is for me. And I'll just sit there for a second with my breath and good thoughts. And like, just kind of letting go of the stuff that was starting to sort of come up. And I feel so much better. So I am gifting you the tree of no doubt. You can sit with me there anytime you want. And I can text you that I'm doing that. You can text me and say, sit with me in the, under the tree of no doubt. And I will, I will sit with you. It reminds me of that song. Um, remember the movie over the top with Stallone? Yes. And that song, meet me halfway. 
Yeah. Across the sky, but sit with me under the tree of doubt. That's what I'm thinking. Ooh, of. I'm going to do it. You should write a song. Sit with me under the tree of doubt. That'd be a good title. No doubt. No, the you tree do, of no doubt. Of no doubt. That's what I meant. But I, I would yeah. call it the tree of undoubt. Oh, I like that. The tree of undoubt. I kind of like that. Um, mm-hmm. If you could do any of the movies or shows that have passed that you've done, you see these reunions, you see all these people getting together for another episode. I think Seinfeld's doing another episode. I know. Yeah, so it's crazy. Would you do, revisit Party of Five? No, I would do Ghost Whisper. You would. You'd go back to Ghost Whisper. You love that show. And that lasted, what, eight years? I loved it, yeah. It was, it was one of my favorite jobs. Melinda Gordon hands down one of my favorite characters I've ever played, if not my favorite to date. Um, and yeah, I would love to do it. But yeah. nothing else. What about, I know what you did last summer. Would you make an appearance if they did a third one? 100%. You would. Yes. Yeah. 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 you love those. I movies. loved making those movies. I mean, but talk about like people being like, well, she doesn't look 18 anymore. Um, but I would do it. But look sure. at Nev Campbell. She's doing a new scream and they're all older. Amazing. She's amazing. She looks amazing. I just hung out with her a couple of weeks ago for the first time. And she didn't know that I was a big fan. And uh, some of the guys from Scream, I'm friends with like Skeet uh, and Matt, they uh, introduced me to her. And I sat next to her. At, you know, we were at this restaurant. We just all hung out. And she was the funniest, sweetest, like just one liner cool. Do you know her? I do just, for, I mean, I was really young when we did party of five, but, um, but yeah, I always enjoyed like spending time with her and she was just, she's just a cool person. Um, she was always really cool and always very funny. Yeah. Uh, she thought that I was a major dork, I think, cause I was a kid, but, um, but yeah, we, she was just great. Wait, how and many I, years I, older uh, is she than you? Uh, she's probably like, no, not that she's much. Probably older, she's probably my age. She's probably 50. 15. But because I, I started that show when I was 15. So like an 18 year old was like older to me. You know what I mean? Right. And you weren't even so supposed I, to be, you weren't even a regular until season two. You did it like a, a nine episode arc. Yeah. I was just supposed to be on for nine episodes and then it kind of kept going. Yeah. Was it a great time in your life? Oh, loved it. Loved it. Scott Wolf. The dreamiest. I mean, I got to be Scott Wolf's girlfriend on TV. I mean, as a, te- as a real life teenager, I got to pretend that guy was my boyfriend. Was he not the nicest, sweetest, uh, raised so well? I to this day, I feel the the joy and and the kindness just coming out in his texts. <laughs> oh, he's he's yeah, the kindest, sweetest. He yeah, we just had we just had a blast. It was it was so fun. Do you, you know, I, I want to ask you this and then we'll get into the shit talking questions uh, oh, that, fun. that are fun. But I always loved hearing you sing. I always loved, you know, I always joke about it, but I love that song, Bare Naked. And I loved a lot of your other songs. You. And I always thought you had such a wonderful voice. Have you ever thought of making a new album just for you? Just something that because you love music or is it something that eh, I don't really want to do it anymore? Um, I do think about it all the time. Um, yeah, I do think about it all the time. I don't, I don't know how to do it. Like just for me, you know what I mean? Like I, I would have to, maybe you could tell me how to do that. Like to just write songs and like put them out and you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would, I would love to do that at some point. I just haven't, I just haven't done it. What if I wrote a really good song, a little duet with us Yeah. on my album? Would you, would you consider it? 100%. Because I wrote a yeah. song, but I didn't think of you because I didn't think you'd do it and you're busy and your kids. Oh, because you but, didn't think of me. Well, but, well, I would have, but it's called the. Oh, le- we're the, losing the connections. Oh, the connection's gone. No, I just was like, she doesn't want to do this. But like, you know, I'll, I'll write something if you end up wanting to do it or not. But it, and you could always write it with me. But I wrote a song called The Letter on my last album or the second to last album on Sunspin. And it's a little duet and it's a little country ish. And it's really cool. I love it. It's one of my favorite songs. But my friend Emma recorded with me and I'm like, you would have been great, but I, I would love to do some kind of like little duet. I would you. love to do that. Always think of me. Yeah, I would love to do that. I will think of you. Thank you. Remember that song? Ja, you'll think of me. Who is that? Keith Urban. Oh, oh, Keith Urban. I love Keith Urban. Oh. Wait, do you like country music? Are yeah. You a country guy? Yeah. That's awesome. I like old I country. Love- Eddie Rabbit, Ronnie Millsap, Alabama. Right. Uh, I'm starting Alabama. to like the, uh, the, uh, 
Judd sisters. Yes. Some of their stuff. I'm like, wow, they're actually really good. And I never really listened to them. A little yeah. Kenny Rogers, little Dolly. A little Who doesn't like Kenny Rogers and Dolly? Little the best. Yeah, the best. What's your favorite band of all time? My favorite band of all time? Journey. What's your favorite song from Journey? <gasps> I mean, probably Don't Stop Believing. You don't like Send her My Love. No, I love all of them. I love all of them, but if I had to pick a favorite, like go to. to what's what's the one song you'd sing besides what's the one 80 song go to for karaoke for you? I don't know if it's 80s, but um what is the oh my gosh, now I'm blanking on the song. Don't say Harry Styles. Is it it was missing you? John Waite. Yes. Was that 80s? I ain't missing you at uh, all. That's my jam. Obsessed. Do you know who she went out? We uh, should he, remake that song as a duet. I would do that. And there's a song. Let's do that. On the telegraph tonight. I ain't missing you at all. Yes. That we, could be, that's a hard one to it as sing. A duet. Yeah. No, it's not. Every time I think of you, I always catch uh -huh. my breath. And I hope it's good breath. Because I'm a breath guy. <laughs> And I want you to away. Yes. I love that song. Yes. And I'm wondering why you left. See, you you can just hear okay. it. You gotta sing. You gotta sing again. I'm writing a song for us. Okay, do it. I am. This has been a joy. Thanks for opening up about your mom, about Hollywood, about life. I'm so Thank glad you. you're taking care of yourself. You look great. I love the gratitudes. Um, I'll meet you under the tree of undoubt. I can't wait. And I will sit with you. I promise you'll feel better. Sit with me. I need it. And um, I love you. I can't wait to hang out with your husband. That was weird. I love you too. <laughs> I love you, Hewitt. If you're even listening to this. Hewitt? Who calls you Hewitt? Hey, you know Hewitt? Or is it <laughs> JLH? What? Wouldn't it be Love Hewitt? Thank you, Love Hewitt. Thank you, Love. I want to thank you, Love, for them. Do you remember? <laughs> but Love Hewitt sounds like a guy who played bass in the 70s. Now batting third baseman, <laughs> Love Hewitt. And that. Here's the pitch on the way in a base hit by Love Hewitt. He's going to try for two, and he's out. Love Hewitt. And at the bottom of one. All right, there we go. The lesser known Mets player. Yeah. Mets are terrible. <laughs> uh, thank you for being on the podcast. We had a blast with you, and it means a lot that you came back on. Maybe one day you'll come to the house and do it in person. Huh? What do you think of that? Uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. Ryan, thanks for being here. Um, and this will air Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I, I was excited to hear this episode because I spent most of it looking after your dog. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> You're hoping it came together and it was recording. Jess, Bill, and uh, Joe were not available. So I was I was on dog duty during this recording. Oh, I remember. I remember they were barking. You had to let, uh, you had to let uh, I said Buffy. Buffy. Buffy out. You let Buffy out. Yeah. You let uh, Buddy. Uh -huh. No, it's not Buddy. It's Charlie. Uh -huh. I don't remember my dog's name. <laughs> That's how this day is going. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, big shout out to my top tier patrons. I'm about to read their names off. If you're a top tier, you also get your name shouted out every episode. And I adore you. Join patreon.com slash inside of you. And um, I will send you a message. And thank you for the support. It means a lot. Nancy D, Kristen, and Leah. See, I didn't say Leah and Kristen. I said Kristen and Leah. This time, Kristen gets first billing. What do you think of that, Kristen? Lil Lisa. Yukiko. Hi, Yukiko. Hi, Jill E. and Brian H. Brian H., good to see you at the Depeche Mode night. That was a blast. Nico P. Hey, big love to that little boy of yours. Big love to him. I'm thinking about him. I hope he's feeling better. Zach. Uh, Robert B., Jason W., Sophie M., Sophie M., I just saw Sophie M., Dream Weaver. How are you, Dream? Raj C, still around, baby, still around. Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 more, Santiago M, Chad W, Leanne P. Hi, Leanne. Maddie S, Belinda N, Dave H. You know Dave Hall? You think Dave likes when I do this, when I shout out to Dave Hall because I love him so much? You should ask him. Dave, send me a note. You like this? Sheila G. Oh, oh, Sheila. You know I want to be your only one. Go ahead, Ryan. Brad D. Ray H. Tabitha T. Tom N. Talia M. Betsy D. Rhiannon C. Corey K. Devnex and Michelle A. Jeremy C. 
Brandy D and Joey M. That was really sexy. I was going for 94.7 The Wave vibe. 94.7 <laughs> The Wave. <laughs> the last Uber I was We're in was listening to that. Thing. That's 94. why. 94.7 right now. Shout out to Eugene and Leah. Corey, Angela F., Mel S., Christine S. We've got Gloria Estefan coming up after this. Eric H., Shane R., Andrew M. Good uh, shout out to Amanda R., Kevin E., Stephanie K. Uh, hopefully those people down in Sacramento are okay. Joel, L., Jam and J., Lee and J., Luna R., and Mike F., 94.7, The Wave. Stone Age, Brian L. says he's really sorry. And <laughs> <laughs> says he's sorry, wants, wants to try anything to get back together, baby. Uh, Jules M., Kendall L., Jessica B., Kyle F., Marisol P., Kaylee J., Brian A., Ashley F., Mary and Louise L., Romeo B., Frank B., and Jen T., Nikki L, April R, Randy S, JDW. Sounds like a lawyer. JDW and Associates. It does. <laughs> Oral P. It's almost like the toothbrush. Oral B. Mm. Oral P. Ginger Insomniac. Rachel D, Melissa H, Nick W, Stephanie and Evan. Charlene A, Don G, Jenny B. Lorelai's no, no longer here. Mm. Lorelai gave up on the podcast. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. If you give up on a podcast, what else are you going to give up on yeah. in your life? We still, we still love you anyway. Uh, that's about it. Um, that's all I got, guys. I hope you had a great holiday. And uh, from uh, the Hollywood Hills in Hollywood, California, I'm Michael Rosenbaum. I am Ryan Tejas. I'm here as well. We love you. And Ryan, say the magic words. Whoa. Be good to yourself. Always be good to yourself. All right. See you guys. Mm -hmm.